The Siege of Knoxville, Julia Roberts, and Martin Scorsese are all on this day. Welcome back to On This Day. Today's date is November 17th, 2022. It is the 321st day of the year. There are 44 days left in 2022. It's the 46th Thursday in the 46th week and the 57th day of fall. There are 34 days left until winter. If you're here in Portland, Oregon, you know it is cold enough right now where we should be getting some winter weather. I mean, it's cold. You'd think we'd have some snow. Nothing yet. If today's your birthday, you're a Scorpio. Today is National Take a Hike Day. National Take a hike day on November 17th encourages us to get out there and hike the trails. There's over 60,000 miles of trails in the United States in the national trail system. So there's no lack of opportunity to take a hike. That's what it says on their website. Some of those trails are hundreds of years old. For example, the oldest continuously used trail in the United States is the Crawford Pass in New Hampshire. The beginning of the mountain path was cleared to the summit of Mount Washington in 1819. So yeah, it's been around a while. That's 200 years. Other trails allow us to follow the footsteps of Lewis and Clark or explore even more ancient history like Effigy Mounds National Monument. All right, let's see what else November 17th has given us. 1777, the Articles of Confederation in the United States are submitted to the states for ratification. And we just talked about this the other day. This was kind of the precursor to the Constitution of the United States. It was how the government was run and how the states were run, kind of a set of rules, but it was a little weak. The federal government had really no powers whatsoever. Whatsoever. And so it just kind of made the whole thing a little weak. And then later on, they came up with the Constitution, which made it a lot better. 1800, the United States Congress holds its first session in Washington, D.C. 1800, wow. I really thought it was a little earlier than that. But 1776, 1800, yeah, that makes sense. 1856, the American Old West. On the Sunita River in present-day southern Arizona, the United States Army establishes Fort Buchanan in order to help control the new land acquired in the Gadsden Purchase. 1863, the American Civil War. The Siege of Knoxville begins. Confederate forces led by General James Longstreet place Knoxville, Tennessee under siege. Now, this could have been the deep dive, but I think last year, year before, we talked about the conclusion of it as the deep dive and I kind of went over all that so we'll do something else. 1896 the Western Pennsylvania Hockey League which later became the first ice hockey league to openly trade and hire players began play at Pittsburgh Shenley Park Casino. 1967, the Vietnam War. Acting on optimistic reports that he had been given on November 13th, U.S. President Lyndon B. Johnson tells the nation that while much remains to be done, we are inflicting greater losses than we've been taking. We're making progress. This turns out to be totally false. 1968, viewers of the Raiders-Jets football game in the Eastern United States are denied the opportunity to watch one of the most exciting finishes in football history when NBC broadcasters switched to the movie Heidi instead, prompting changes to sports broadcasting in the US. <laughs> Now, this was very interesting. This was a rivalry game close to the playoffs. And on a Sunday night, back when we didn't have 200 channels and the internet, everyone was at home watching this game. The Jets and the Raiders were pretty much AFL rivals. There were a lot of eyeballs watching this game. Back in the day, football games rarely lasted more than two and a half hours. I mean, that was a rare thing. So they had scheduled three hours for the telecast like they normally did. But a lot of injuries, a lot of extra timeouts, a lot of penalties kind of pushed the game back a little bit. The Raiders were favored to win this game by seven points. And at the end of the third quarter, it was 19 to 22. The Jets having 19, the Raiders having 22. Back in the day, the Raiders were kind of known as the dirtiest team to play in the league. Matter of fact, when they played the Jets the year before, Joe Namath, the quarterback, had been punched in the groin a couple times. They were aiming at his knees when they tried to tackle him because they knew he had bad knees. And at one point, they had broken Joe Namath's jaw. This was just during a football game. This wasn't a street fight, but that's how the Raiders played back in the day. So this was definitely a rivalry. Into the fourth quarter, the Jets got ahead. They scored two touchdowns and missed an extra point. The Raiders scored one more time, but they were still behind. And that's when the East Coast switched to Heidi. Now, like I'd said, this was back before the internet, Sports Center, all that stuff. So if you were on the East Coast and you watched the end of this game, you thought the Jets won and you're probably celebrating. If you're a Jets fan, you're on the East Coast, it's a good night. The Jets obviously won. It was a little over a minute left in the game. People on the West Coast, got to see what really happened. The Raiders came back and won by 11 points. 
When the Heidi game came on, NBC executives tried to call the control room to fix the situation and get the football game put back on as quick as they could. The problem was the phone lines at NBC were jammed from angry people on the East Coast trying to get the game back on. It was never put back on. One interesting story of the whole thing is the quarterback for the Jets flew home that night and his father picked him up from the airport. He had some function to be at, so he left before the team. He gets home. His father's all, what are you all sad about? You won the game. You just beat the Raiders. He's all, we lost by 11. Most of the people the next day didn't know that the Jets had actually lost. Now, the changes that were made after this fiasco is an NBC has their own rules and most television broadcasters have their own rules about playing the game out in its entirety. And on top of that, the NFL has in their contract that all games have to be played out in their entirety. 1973, the Watergate scandal. In Orlando, U.S. President Richard Nixon tells 400 Associated Press managing editors, I am not a crook. And this saying is forever associated with Richard Nixon. Saturday Night Live just ran with that one. Laughing and just about any other comedy thing from the 1970s and 80s. 2019, the first known case of COVID-19 is traced to a 55-year-old man who had visited the market in Wuhan, China. Movies released on November 17th. Wonder. This was a great movie. Based on a novel by the same name, this film follows a young boy with facial deformities attending school for the very first time. The film was directed by Stephen Chbosky, who previously directed the 2012 film The Perks of Being a Wallflower, which was pretty good. Wonder starred Julia Roberts, Owen Wilson, Mandy Patinkin, and an actress I think's amazing, Ali Liebert. It's a cute movie. I mean, don't go out of your way to see it, but if it's on like HBO or Netflix, yeah, it's definitely worth a view. Born on November 17th, 1942, one of the greatest directors of all time, Martin Scorsese. He's a acclaimed director whose films frequently feature gangsters and focus on the world of crime. His iconic films include Taxi Driver, Raging Bull, and Goodfellas. In 2006, he won his first Academy Award for Best Director for the film The Departed, after previously being nominated five different times. You know, I'm surprised it took him till 2006 to uh, get an Academy Award for Best Director. As a kid, young Martin wanted to play sports, but he couldn't because of his asthma. He was named to Time Magazine's 2007 list of 100 most influential people in the world. He married his fifth wife in 1999. There was a great commercial that he was in, and it was great. It showed him go pick up his pictures that he'd taken from one hour photo, and he's looking at them, and he's thumbing through them, and he's thumbing through them, and he's like, no, that's no good. That's no good. No, no, that's no good. He gets on his phone. He goes, hey, Billy, it's Uncle Marty. How'd you like turn nine again next week? Like he wants to reshoot the birthday. I thought it was great. He's directed quite a few movies with... Leonardo DiCaprio, The Departed, Gangs of New York, The Aviator, and Wolf of Wall Street. Died on November 17th, 1558. We're going way back. Mary I of England, Queen of England, who persecuted the Protestants in her country, which earned her the nickname Bloody Mary. She burned over 200 religious dissenters. So yeah, she was not well-loved. She was promised to several European leaders in political negotiations, but the plans always fell through. Back in the day, they used to marry, you know, their kids off, like her dad was the King of England, marry her off to the... Prince of Spain or something like that to solidify ties. Mary was in poor health in May of 1558 and she was in pain, possibly of ovarian cysts or uterine cancer. She died on November 17th, 1558 at the age of 42. It was during an influenza epidemic. Of course, that far back, they're really not sure what actually killed her. Could have been the flu, could have been ovarian cancer, who knows. All right, that's today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you got some information out of it. Now go out, have a great day, and be nice to each other.